And welcome back to the North Star Takes podcast with Bailey Policki and Jacob Liberta. You can find all our videos here on our YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, feel free to give us a like and follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. Today we're going to be talking more Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, these videos have been very popular for us. So we're going to continue to talk Timberwolves. I think the anticipation is kind of building as they're getting close to starting training camp here. Season starts in just over a month. Um, they're kind of starting to round out the end of their roster here over these last couple days. Um, starting off with Jared Vanderbilt, he signs a three-year, $13.8 million contract. Um, honestly, this is more money than I was expecting him to get. So I'm kind of surprised that they were willing to dish out a three-year, thirteen and a half, basically $13.5 million contract. Um, he's a great energy player. He's a great defender. Um, he gets rebounds. Um, he's just kind of that energizer bunny you need, honestly, and I, I really like having him on the team, and it kind of shows that they do too. So what are your thoughts about um, how high Jared Vanderbilt's risen just within the last year? Yeah, you know, he's definitely <laughs> taken a step forward in his progression as an NBA player because uh, as it's documented out there, if you read up in his story, he's he's battled a lot, honestly, to get to this point. He was a highly touted, highly touted recruit in high school at mm -hmm. McDonald's All-American, Kentucky blue chip prospect, but he ended up having uh, over the course of his career, two different foot surgeries, one on each foot. And yeah. he played very limited minutes until this last season. But then when he finally got some playing time and he was really healthy, then he started to show the promise that everybody probably had envisioned for him for years. So I'm really excited for him to get this contract. I know on the surface, it seems a little bit high for really how much he's done in the NBA, but at the same time, I think it's also a little bit higher basically as far as what the potential is here because, like you said, I think he's an energizer for this team. I think he's a really instinctive player, and I think he plays with good, I, I would say, good good pace, I guess. I don't know. The, the effort is just always there. And I think he's also just a rebounding presence on the inside. I think the Timberwolves are obviously, when you look at the roster, lacking true power forwards, mm -hmm. and we need somebody else that can rebound the basketball besides Cat. So I think – I think Vanderbilt is huge for that. I think he can just complement the starting lineup a lot if if they do choose to start him. I think they will. But, I mean, yeah. I guess you never know. It remains to be seen a little bit as we're a little bit too far away from the season to really know. But mm -hmm. I think with uh, Vando, I think he just fits in because he's not obviously a score first guy. So he can complement basically everybody else in our starting five that really is. So right. I think I think he's huge. He's an excellent cutter for all of our playmakers to pass on the ball when the looks are there in the paint. So, I don't know. I, I just love this and – on all levels, bringing, bringing back Vanderbilt just because of what he showed last year. Yeah, I agree with you. I I liked his potential when we traded for him uh, from the Denver Nuggets when we got Malik Beasley in that deal as well. Um, and he's just, yeah, he's not like an, a, a super um, great shooter or, you know, he's not like a super – he's not a difference maker on offense necessarily, but mm -hmm. all the other intangibles he brings to the game, like you said, it actually kind of meshes with our starting lineup that is very um, top-heavy, offensive-heavy. Um, with Ant, D'Lo, and Cat, and possibly like Malik Beasley or something, or Jaden McDaniels even. So mm -hmm. having a Vanderbilt in there to kind of steady it out, play some defense, um, have some energy, get some rebounds, um, even mix it up every now and then with the opposing team, I think that's awesome. I think you need a guy like that, and I'm I'm very happy he's back for at least the next few years. So that's yes. going to be exciting. Um, Absolutely. I love having a grinder like that. And uh, for those who know me pretty well, I'm a big fan of Kentucky products. So <laughs> yes. I think Kentucky, John Calipari players, I love having them on my team, and especially in the NBA with, uh, uh, well, we have Kat, who's been the center point of this franchise for how long now and number, yep. former number one overall pick. So I'm a big fan of Kentucky players. Yeah, big blue nation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, though, we also signed Jordan McLaughlin, which I think was kind of a surprise. I think people thought um, – after trading for Patrick Beverly, assuming that the Leandro Balmero deal was going to get done, that um, Jordan McLaughlin probably wouldn't be back this season. But now he's going to be back for another three years at six and a half mil um, total money. So I kind of like this signing too. I mean, he's a good third point guard. Um, he can run the offense. He can help D'Angelo Russell play off ball, which I know Chris Finch likes to do. Um, he seemed to mesh with D'Angelo pretty well um, when they played together last year. So – I mean, overall, I'm 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 pretty happy with this signing. Once again, I think I think it's kind of important to bring these guys back because uh, McLaughlin and Vanderbilt specifically are like are guys that started out with the Iowa Wolves. They kind of worked their way up to the active roster, and now they've shown that they can actually play in the NBA. So, I think these are good success stories for Gerson Rosas as well. 
Yeah, honestly, I, I totally agree. I think having players like this that kind of come out of really not just high draft picks and um, just free agent signings that we threw a bunch of money at, I think this is huge for the development of a team to turn into a true uh, playoff mainstay, hopefully. And a guy mm-hmm. like McLaughlin, I think he, I think he's just one of those guys. And I think it's huge that we brought him back. Like you said, it was a little bit unexpected because of bringing in Beverly and you wouldn't think we'd roll with more than two point guards on this roster. But at the same yep. time, I think Finch likes to play Russell off the ball a lot. So I think this, this makes sense because then he just provides more depth and I think he'll still get his minutes, which honestly I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because he's gotten better every year he's been here. So I'm excited to see his continued involvement on this team. And I think just being a solid role player off the bench for us, I think it's huge and, I think he can do a little bit of everything. So um, I think this is another good move, especially when we're paying him like two mil a year. So I'll definitely yeah, take it. Definitely doesn't hurt us too much. And I know uh, we're going to get into this in a little bit, but the Wolves are up against the luxury tax line. So they kind of have to watch their finances a little bit. But uh, before we jump into that, there's also been reports um, specifically from Dane Moore and Darren Doogie Wolfson that the Timberwolves are close to signing Leandro Balmero. Um, could be done as soon as Wednesday when this video will be released. Um, sounds like he'll sign his four-year contract into the NBA. They'll have him through 2025. Um, so what, I guess what's your initial reaction to finally getting him here? I mean, it was only a year after he's been drafted, but um, there's, a, there's a little bit of hype built up with him. He wasn't a great player over in Europe, but um, I think there's some untapped potential here that the Timberwolves might be able to get out of him. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is the the mystery, obviously, from last year's draft. We took those three guys in the first round from uh, Ant to Bomero and then Jay McDaniels. Everybody's wondering, who is this Bomero guy? I mean, he stayed overseas for another year and didn't come over right away and uh, didn't even come to Minnesota until it got to, I think, was this past. And I I think this this guy is going to provide a lot of uh, versatility. Oh, can you still hear me, Bailey? Yes. Yeah. So you glitched, you glitched out for a little bit there. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, my, continue my your thought. No, you're good. Yes. So as I was saying about Bomero, I think the thing I like about him is that he's just got that versatility that he's going to bring to this roster because I think we're missing – obviously, I think last year we are missing a lot of defense, and I think that's exactly one of his – biggest strengths is just on ball defense and being kind of a pesky player and yep. on the flip side when he's playing offense he's definitely a playmaker and he's got a pretty similar stature to Jaden McDaniel so that's how you can really envision how he'd fit into this lineup because he's I think he's about an inch or two shorter than Jaden McDaniels but he's hmm. about the same weight I saw when I looked it up so okay. I think he's just a combo guard again uh, he could probably play I'd probably say probably the two or three, even though he's six, seven, that's a little bit tall, but yeah. I think he'll be able to do a little bit of everything off the bench. And that's, that's just another role player that we're going to need. If we're going to really be a team that's going to make the playoffs and make some noise potentially. And because obviously good teams go a little bit deeper than just their starting lineup. And yeah. I think Bomero is going to be a, uh, another nice piece to add to this. Uh, what feels like a, one of the deeper benches we've seen in a, in a long time, as long as I can remember, but right. I guess it remains to be seen. Um, I, I kind of need to see it to believe it, but I'm with you. On paper, it does seem that this bench is a lot deeper, and I just I think having a guy like this off the bench is huge too. Uh, you know, a playmaking uh, combo guard. He's not the best shooter in the world, but he can pass, mm-hmm. distribute. Um, I think he can also like run an offense if you need him to. Yes. So I think that's huge as well. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a learning curve. I don't even know if he'll necessarily like get in the rotation right away. Um, he may even I don't. I don't know with signing a contract like this if you just send a if you send a guy like this to Iowa if he's making that much money like four mil or so a year I don't I don't see that necessarily I guess but I don't, I don't really know how that works but um, I would guess if he doesn't get the rotation for a while maybe they would send him down there I don't know but um, hopefully they can find a way to get him in right away um, this team's yeah we're up to fourteen players now it looks like um, they have six hundred fourteen thousand dollars left according to Dane Moore's uh, very detailed spreadsheet, which is fantastic to look at, to look at the Wolves contract situation for the next uh, four seasons or so. So they got $614,000 before they hit the luxury tax line. Um, They're well over the salary cap for this season, which apparently doesn't matter. (laughs) But um, so yeah, we got 14 guys on roster. I'm guessing the 15th guy will probably be a summer league standout, Nathan Knight. Um, center slash power forward guy. So I'm guessing he'll be the 15th guy, which we could probably use another power forward type body anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I guess what I just found interesting is that um, Patrick Beverly and Torian Prince combined make $27 million this upcoming season, and they're going to be free agents after this upcoming season. So I know they can't be traded until sometime in October, and I'm wondering if the Wolves are kind of holding out hope here for this um, for this Ben Simmons thing, if they can just wait until October, get – get you know possibly get these guys off their books trade them to philly obviously they'd have to throw in more as well but i mean those guys alone could almost make the money work and then you know you factor in some picks and maybe another player i mean it might be unrealistic that we could get ben simmons for such a cheap uh price in terms of talent but i don't know the longer this drags on i don't know man yeah it's that's kind of the big question mark now after we've brought back these guys who basically waited all summer to sign with uh, McLaughlin and Vanderbilt and now Bull Myro's on the horizon too. It's just the only question left is, is this the roster we're really going to go into the season with or are we going to keep mm-hmm. flipping guys to uh, get the bigger fish and Simmons? I, I don't know what Rosas is thinking. I mean, uh, sometimes he can be a sneaky guy. But yeah. I would I would say with those expiring contracts you mentioned, especially making up that much money, that, that there's definitely potential there for them to be included in a flip to Philly for Ben Simmons. But – Maybe Rose Haas is cool with rolling in the season with this current group. I, yeah, I, your guess is as good as mine. But I, I think that's definitely still on the table as all the rumors are pointing to. I think the Wolves are kind of the front runners right now. It just depends mm-hmm. on is Philly willing to go down from their asking price and is Rose Haas dead set on it already and maybe he's just waiting the necessary required time until October when he can flip these guys. But right. I, I personally, I, I know I've said this probably beat this drum a lot of times on – on our uh, pod, but I would say that I'd say that Ben Simmons probably isn't the move for us right now. And I think I like just the how deep this roster feels. Like you said, there's obviously an element to seeing. You got to see it to believe it. And who knows if these bench guys can hopefully mesh out the bench yeah. and just play well together. I don't know. Maybe it could be a disaster. I, I have no idea. But <laughs> I I think that I, I just kind of want to roll with this roster we got right now. And that kind of seems to – Kind of seems the sentiment too among all you guys' comments that uh, follow these wolves videos and uh, mm-hmm. give us some feedback. Like I think you guys are kind of in the same boat with us that it's it's a little bit a little bit nerve wracking to think about how much we'd have to give up for Simmons. Yeah, I I'm kind of with you. I mean, I, in my mind, I feel like they can't go wrong either way. It's like you're either acquiring a star player. Um, while he's not a great shooter, he's very good at everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, or you just keep your current squad that looks to be the deepest it's been since, especially since Rosas has been here, um, probably since the heyday of the Tibbs era, yeah. you know, with uh, Butler and Teague and all, you know, Taj Gibson and all those guys. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm loving the way this roster is shaping out, and I wouldn't be mad whatsoever if they decide to just roll with it to start the season, um, give it the first couple months. Hopefully, guys can stay healthy. If you're bigger. Sure. If your big three can gel, which they appeared to be gelling towards the end of last season, mm-hmm. that's going to be huge. Um, I know they're going to they're gonna be in Minneapolis this week, I believe, doing workouts. Nice. So, I don't know. It's just exciting, man. I'm, yeah. I'm excited about the way this, this squad's looking. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I The Ben Simmons thing is always intriguing, and it's fun to hear, you know, the possible rumors. The Wolves are still interested, but it's like, mm-hmm. will they actually pull the trigger? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, here's another thing to consider, too. I think one of the biggest – pulls to try and get Ben Simmons for this team, like balance it out is just what he brings on the defensive end, really. Yes. And when you start to think about this roster coming together with now Bomero close to signing a deal and coming to the team, you think about it, you probably do obviously we haven't even seen Bomero play, so we don't know this for sure. But right. not nothing certain. But I would say now we have three defensive stalwarts, maybe yep. four, throw McDaniels there too, between McDaniels, Bomaro, and then you got J O and Pat Bev. Right, I think that's a lot of good defensive talent that we really didn't have last year. It didn't go that deep. So, yeah, I agree with you. Honestly, that's a very good point. Like, we had a Kogi and McDaniel's, but that isn't enough. Like, if you have a Patrick Beverly, and then if Balmero can be decent, it appears that Cat's defense is improving as well at the center position. Um, Vanderbilt, you know, so there's there's guys here that can play D. So, yes, I'm I'm kind of with you. Like, if Ben Simmons, if you're trading for him for his defense, I guess is it worth it to have to give up some of your great offensive players to get even more defense in return when it looks like your defense is already improving? So I, I kind of see where you're coming from there. And it's, I'm sure that's the the kind of game that Gerson Rosas has to play here. Um, yeah. 
any final thoughts, I guess, to close out this video, um, the way the roster's shaping out, anything on the top of your mind? I'm excited for Wolf season, especially after a dismal start to the Vikings season. I just left <laughs> a sour taste in my mouth after playing the yep. Bengals. Man, mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty pumped for the Wolves because there's so much promise there, so much energy that I feel like is lacking some of these other teams, especially the Twins have been a lost cause for a couple months now. And I, at the Wild with the Kirill Kaprizov yeah. <laughs> uh, contract talks and basically up in the air, I don't know. There's not, there's not a whole lot of things to be positive about with these other teams in this moment. So the Wolves, man, I'm all in on the Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Timberwolves, but honestly, they're sitting in a very good position right now, especially like we, like you said, compared to these other Minnesota teams. I think the Kaprizov thing will get done, but that's a story for another day. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. I think especially if the Vikings keep struggling here, the Timberwolves are going to be the the hot commodity, I think, especially if, if all their talent can come together and start winning some games. Whew. Yes. I mean, we don't really know what it's like to have a really to have a good NBA team in this town. So I know, right? That'd be so much fun. I'm looking forward to figuring that out, but um, we'll, we'll talk about that another time too. So that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, give us a like as well. I know people have been liking our Timberwolves content lately, so we'll keep pumping that out for you guys. Um, leave your comments below as well about how you're feeling about how this roster is shaping out, um, what you think about this week's deals, signing out the uh, Vanderbilt, McLaughlin, and Balmero. Um, feel free to give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram as well and stay tuned for more content and thanks for watching.